Okay, so now we're going to open Power BI and you have to have Power BI Desktop to build this. So um, you may need to request that and make it clear to the powers of the B that the web version is, is different than the desktop version um, because you'll need it in order to link to the OneDrive file. So Power BI is nice and that it can pull data directly from an Excel file that's on OneDrive without even needing to go to your um, hard drive. It can just pull it straight out of the cloud. So I'm going to create a new Power BI file and then I'm going to choose from my data sources, <laughs> go to get data, and I'm going to choose web. And it took me forever to figure out that it was web, but it's considered web. Now, it'll ask you for a URL. You need to get the URL of your OneDrive file. That is different than what you see in the browser. So when you go to a OneDrive file, it doesn't always show you the full URL. So let's go over to OneDrive and I'll show you how you can find the URL of that Excel file. So I'm going to go to my reference folder and open that up and there is that file that has been placed there nicely for us. So I'm going to click the three dots when I'm hovering over it and then I'm going to go to details and under details again scrolling down this list um, there is a path now the path doesn't look like a URL but if you click the copy little copy icon there that will copy the URL and so we can take that URL and go back to Power BI and paste it in there and click OK. And now this is um, going to go to, out on the cloud to that Excel file and pull that as a data source. Now it can be really helpful at this point. It can uh, get rid of the headers and all that for you automatically if, you, if you're a patient right here. I think you do have to click the check. Oh no, there it is right there. So if you pick that table it um, and then click transform data, it's going to get right to the data that's in your sheet. So it just magically it finds that sheet with all the data. And if you look from the applied steps, so the in Power BI, it goes through steps to process your data. So for example, in this first step, source, this is where um, the macro is finding the source of your data. So it's it's looking, it found a tab that has the right name, then it does some navigation, um, it does some cleaning up of the stuff at the top, it promotes headers. So right now when we go to the next step, those are now promoted as headers, and it tries to figure out the data types for each of the columns. I'm going to come over here and fix this one because it didn't realize that was a date, so I'm going to choose this date format. Now, I don't really need time zone, so I picked that one, but I'm going to go back and choose just regular date time. It's asking me if I want to create a new step or just stick that in the, the current step on change type and I'm going to go ahead and keep it there. I'm going to delete that attempts because we in an earlier video realized that's always one and doesn't do anything. And then here I'm going to split these because their data is um, split up right now by underscores and I, I really want these items to be in separate columns. So for example this is the scene column, this is the slide column, and then this is the type of question. I When I recorded this I typed the wrong thing, so it says <laughs> quiz attempt and um, I'll fix this in a second, but 
The reason that I want to break these out is that it makes it easier to filter based on the different items. Now, having split them up like this, I usually put the slide and the scene back together. But first I split them up by by the this format and then I I'll, I'll go back and put the slide and the scene together just cuz it's usually not necessary to split those up. But now I've got that data and I've applied that. So it's loading it into my visual and here in a second after it pulls in that data um, it will show in the far right column it will show my my table and I'm going to just close that little window. I'm, so if I come over here, I can see all of the data points, all of the columns um, that I can then use them in, in my visual. So that's kind of how to get the data into Power BI. And the next thing I'll share is how I would build a typical table. But for now, I'll stop.